Russia's actions in Ukraine are in blatant breach of the UN Charter, Norway's Prime Minister Jonas Garstura told delegates at the UN General Assembly on Thursday. In his remarks, Sture said Russia bears sole responsibility for the war and its consequences and is responsible for bringing it to an end. He lamented the devastating consequences of the Russians' offensive on energy supplies and food security around the world. Sture said ordinary people across the globe, not least people in developing countries, are paying the price. Mr. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. The UN Charter sets out clear principles for a rule-based international order. But now, this rule-based order is under attack. February 2022 ushered in what we hoped we would never witness again, a new large-scale war in Europe. Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine has led to massive suffering large-scale humanitarian needs and destruction of civilian infrastructure. Russia bears sole responsibility for the war and its consequences, and Russia is responsible for bringing it to an end. Meanwhile, Mexican Foreign Minister Antonio Ebrard presented a proposal to accompany UN negotiations for a Russia-Ukraine truce. He said that given the inaction of the United Nations, Mexican President Manuel Andres López Obrador is proposing a caucus of heads of state and governments to encourage and accompany the Secretary General's efforts to promote confidence-building measures between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. El presidente de México, el licenciado López Obrador, consciente de la responsabilidad individual y colectiva que tenemos, propone que una comitiva o caucus de jefes de Estado y de gobierno aliente y acompañe los esfuerzos del Secretario General para promover medidas de fomento de la confianza hoy perdida entre la Federación Rusa y Ucrania, que permitan generar las condiciones tan pronto sea posible para acercar a las partes a los mecanismos de solución pacífica de las controversias que señala la Carta de las Naciones Unidas. Meanwhile, Niger's President Muhammad Bazoum is warning that climate change is helping to fuel Islamic extremism in Africa's troubled Sahel region. He said prolonged droughts brought on by global warming are threatening the practice of pastoral farming in West Africa, and that extreme weather events caused by climate change are worsening food insecurity in the region, forcing people to flee their homes, fueling droughts and diminishing water resources in the region. Du fait du règlement, du dérèglement climatique, le continent africain est exposé à l'aggravation de la sécurité, de l'insécurité alimentaire, au déplacement des populations, aux sécheresses récurrentes et à la pression des ressources en eau. And Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa is appealing for support to efforts to end terrorism and conflicts in Africa and helping the continent deal with the devastating impacts of climate change. Anangagwa told the UN General Assembly that the spread of terrorism and escalation of all disputes is undermining efforts to restore peace and stability in the continent. In 2022, mid-season droughts and tropical cyclones regrettably reduced the overall performance of the agricultural sector. To this end, the climate change conundrum has continued to be an albatross. The United Nations framework, conventional climate change, and the Paris Agreement should remain the primary platform for negotiating our collective global response to climate change. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe for this. UNGA resolutions are seen as an expression of the will of the international community on a given topic, although they are non-binding, which means they have no legal power, but carry symbolic importance in world affairs. In contrast, resolutions passed by the 15-member UN Security Council are generally considered binding under international law, and member states are obliged to act on them.